Hello, Maverick fans. Welcome to another edition of the Mav Puck Cast, a special quarantine edition. As we sit hunkered down trying to social distance ourselves, John is calling in today. Yes, I am, which I did twice during the season. Yeah, we look like geniuses for trying that out, right? Yeah, little did we know that, you know, uh, you know, a, a pandemic was going to spread across the globe and we were going to have to, you know, be doing this because it was the only option we had. When we first did the call in back in, gosh, I think it was either December or January, I was kind of worried because I thought Jason's going to think that I just am going to want to call in every week because I don't want to drive all the way to Western Douglas County to your house. <laughs> Yeah, we do live we we do live kind of out there, but uh, it, yeah, it worked much. out in our favor a little bit, I think, that we yeah, guys kind of tested out, and so we we thought this method works the best. So hopefully, quality wise, it comes through. I hope it works. I hope it works well. I just it's it's crazy that we're you know that we're here talking under these circumstances because we were getting ready to you know talk about UNO's you know, playoff, NCHC playoff series at Denver University this weekend, and uh, that did not happen. And it was just crazy how quickly all of all of that fell apart for every sport. Yeah, so there's no, uh, there's no game to review. There's no game to preview. There's no banter about which one of us was right about our series in Denver, so we just kind of have to say the season's over, this is what it is, and and move on. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I, I will tell you, just, just first of all, you know, when the announcement came down that they weren't going to allow spectators at college hockey games this weekend, that was the first thing that they had said. I thought to myself, oh, my gosh, if UNO had had home playoffs, what about my, you know, 22-year attendance streak? That's 483 <laughs> games. What what would Bridget and I do in that circumstance? We were playing games at Baxter Arena because if we finished, you know, in the one of the top four spots, Jason, we would have had home ice and, and we would have been playing those games. And and so I, I was, I mean, it just gave me kind of a sinking feeling because I felt like, oh my gosh, I, I was actually glad we had games on the road. And then, you know, and then obviously just, you know, mere hours later, it turned into where all of the games just got canceled and, and not just in, you know, hockey, but in basketball and basically every sport, golf got canceled, NASCAR got canceled. I mean, you know, everybody's kind of shutting shutting everything down and it's just been a crazy whirlwind that's happened I think um the, you know the difference a little bit was that the ncaa uh, the hockey conferences for the most part came out and said we're done you know where basketball and hockey nhl wise and ahl wise have said well we're gonna we're going to basically take a wait and see approach and see how long this lasts before we decide if our season's over or if we're you know going to going to do something. So part of me was like, man, I wish they would have just said, you know, we'll we'll try something different. But I get it. Like I get how hard it is to to deal with these neutral sites and the schedules that they have and and what they have available two months down the road or whatever it ends up being, you know, to be able to play something like this. I had saw a writer that had said, you know, they, he really wished they would have just canceled the conference stuff, you know, waited two weeks and then decide, you know, maybe you postpone uh, the NCAA tournament. Uh, maybe you go just to a, you know, top, top four, go to, go play. So it would be, you know, in that case he had North Dakota playing Duluth and Minnesota state playing Cornell. And it, it would be, uh, two games and they're done and then have it, you know, sometime late April, early May and, and still be able to hand out a national championship. So I was kind of like, well, that, that kind of, it's an interesting idea, 
but I still just don't know that the logistics work out. And and as sad as it is to say that, because I'd really like to see some more hockey, uh, I just I don't know how all that stuff works out. How does that play in with basketball? You know, do you cut your sixty four to to sixteen or something? You know, right. How do I mean, they do all that stuff. So yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to know, and and we don't know whether you know, whether this thing will be on the downward slope as far as the whole coronavirus thing, you know, we don't have any idea at this point what will be happening, you know, mid-April, end of April, first part of May. We don't know. And so it could still, we could still be right in the thick of this thing. And Or we could be uh, through it and it's no big deal. And I think that's why the NHL said, hey, we'll take a wait-and-see approach is because they were willing to say, I've heard a lot of people that I know NHL contact wise that have said, yeah, there's just, there's so much stuff that they can do, you know, instead of a seven game playoff series, they go to fives until the Stanley cup, you know, they finish the season, you know, where they are now, they expand the playoffs and do a one game play in for more teams. I mean, they've talked, there's so much talk going around. They have more, they have more power in the play, right? Like, the NHL's got more money, and so they can go to these places and say, hey, we're going to do something and then make it work out, and they own their own arenas and stuff. But from an NCAA standpoint, it, it becomes much, much, much more difficult. You know, some of these schools talked about they already took their ice out. When their their teams didn't have home ice, they, they're not hosting anything. So season ended on Saturday, and Sunday they started taking stuff out. So... I mean, you look up a big event in June at the end of June for Omaha is the College World Series, and they canceled that. Right. And I know, and I know there are some people who are like, should they have canceled it this soon? Well, again, we just don't know. When you look at kind of what's gone on around the world with this virus, we just don't know what will be going on at that point. And so I know there are a lot of frustrated fans. I I don't think that the my personal opinion is I don't think that we'll see NHL again until this fall. That's, that's, I mean, cause doesn't it feel like right when the season ends, usually after the playoffs, like, but a couple months later, we're having preseason NHL hockey again. Oh, uh, they get, get about three months off. Three months at this but point. I mean, there's this... always something going on. Like, and that's, that's what they talk about being the problem, right? Is, and, and it's a little bit of the problem they have with the college world series is it's not so much about their concern for what would be the situation with the pandemic come June. It's how do you, how do you get from where we are right now to June? Can you, can you get games in? Can you get to a point where you can have teams attend the college world series like regionals? How do you schedule regionals? Who goes to the regionals? Where are the regionals? You know, are you okay a month ahead of it and then two months ahead of it? Well, you know, and, then, and, and then, with the NHL, and then you, it and then backs you remember, up because and the, you, you and typically you have a too. month from when the Stanley Cup ends uh, until when free agency begins and you have the draft. Uh, and they have a lottery right after the end of the season to see who gets the top pick. You know, all those things have to change. And do you have to move the draft because of when, if they do play, do you have to, you know, move the draft because you're playing into July or something like that? So I think there's a lot of things to get figured out. And I... My hope is is that we we still have hockey, you know, on an NHL level before October. But I wouldn't be surprised if we don't have anything until October. J- Jason is going to be very sad if there's no hockey till October. He, he I'm already he's like he's like this is the sign of the apocalypse when they cancel hockey. I don't think there's going to be any hockey till October. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens, you know, for example, with like Major League Baseball. Um, the, the whole thing, I mean, it's just this is, you know, uncharted territory here. We've right. we've never seen this before. And that's what's so crazy about it. I mean, I'm 47 years old. I haven't really seen anything like this in my, my lifetime. And a lot of people talk about 9-11, but it wasn't, it wasn't as you know shocking as those events were it wasn't you know it wasn't kind prolonged of this, and it wasn't un, it wasn't like, a, it unknown. wasn't a it, it, yeah and it wasn't a situation where we had to kind of you know sort of hide out in our houses you know i work from home so this is you know 
I mean, me being at home for long periods of time without going anywhere is pretty much par for the course for me. But, but by the same token, when the customers and clientele that we work with are also in the same boat and they may or may not be doing business, then it just creates a, a really, you know, kind of a, a sort of a, a, you know, kind of a possibly a dire situation for a lot of a lot of people. So there's a lot of that going on. And so obviously sports are something that we all use to kind of distract ourselves and have fun. And so it was just weird this weekend, not having basketball to watch or hockey to watch. Um, yeah, it was, it was weird seeing reruns of, you know, last year's conference championships on, on the TV yesterday. And then there was some golf that looked like it was from the past that was uh airing on nbc yesterday so yeah so crazy times so so we'll see i don't think we'll see any more hockey and jason is going to be very very sad if that happens but but this but this is the world we live in at the moment so uh it won't last forever but but we'll get uh, through it right yeah yes we will yes we will and we will be doing podcasts in person again hopefully at some point so um, but yeah, so it's, uh, it's kind of a crazy time and, uh, and, and our Mavs season was cut short and we were excited to see them play Denver this last weekend. Yeah. And I, you know, it creates some interesting scenarios for, for some of the teams, uh, you know, North Dakota is talking about raising a black banner or something and, yeah, Brad Schlossman of the Grand Forks Herald, who is an excellent reporter, by the way. Um, I really like his content. Um, he had a, a column where he brought up the idea, you know, how should you recognize UND hockey this season? You know, so his idea was to hang a banner. Um, the team finished number one in the pairwise rankings. They're uh, in lost tie totals. They went 26, 5, and 4. So they had, they had a great season. We all know that. Um, UNO beat them twice, just as an FYI. Um, but he was talking about putting up a, a black, a black banner. Normally they have green banners, uh, hanging in their arena for their, uh, NCAA and uh, accomplishments that they've had over, over the decades. And so he suggested raising a black banner, um, in honor of that number one finish in the pairwise so that, you know, when a player comes in, let's say 10 years down the road, um, and sees that banner, you know, they can say, you know, we had a a tremendous season, potentially a historic season, but the team wasn't able to play for a national championship because of the, uh, the COVID-19, um, outbreak, uh, globally and, and certainly in the United States. So what do you think of that concept of, of putting up the banner? I understand where they're coming from, that they kind of got robbed of uh, an opportunity. But I, I'm i kind of a purist. Like, I just don't... I, I think they get the Pemrose Cup because obviously they get the Pemrose Cup. I mean, that, that's a done deal. They finished the season. Um, but I... I don't believe that they should get something for a tournament that didn't happen based on the premise that they were the best going in and therefore they get it because, you know, you could say the same thing. I've seen NHL teams, you know, president's trophy. They had, you know, an unbelievable season, put up the most points in the last decade type of thing. And then they lose in the first round. Like I still think it's a, it's a trophy for playing the game for playing the tournament. And if you don't play the tournament, then you can't, you don't get the banner. I don't, I, I feel for you. I'm sorry that it, and I think it sucks that North Dakota doesn't have a chance to, to make the run. Cause I think they had a good chance at it, but right. I, I it wasn't a foregone I com- conclusion. I completely agree with you, Jason. I don't, I don't think you honor that. And here's why I don't think you honor that. I don't think you honor that because I'll just be, I'll just say it. I mean, I think you look at St. Cloud State last season, you know, St. Cloud State overall 
in the 2018-19 season went 36 and 3. Okay? They had a tremendous season. And what happened? They lost in the first game of the NCAA uh, regionals to American International College, which was the number 16 team in that tournament. They were and the lowest they, seeded they team. They lost the conference tournament, too. They did. They lost, uh, yeah, they lost to Duluth in the, in the conference. That was a great game. Um, that's, that's one of the things I, I would mention that, uh, you know, NCHC frozen faceoff. Bridget and I were scheduled to go. We had our hotel rooms. Um, they're non-refundable hotel rooms. I don't know if we're going to be able to get a refund, but that'll be a story for another podcast. But that was a great fun tournament. And that game between Duluth and St. Cloud was fantastic, but you know, um, Duluth ended up winning the NCHC frozen faceoff, and then they went on to win the national championship. So, you know, just because you have a great regular season record does not mean you're necessarily going to make a run to the frozen four. You know, I mean, North Dakota's gotten there a lot of times over the last, you know, 15 years, but I would not do that either. Now the Florida legislature voted the other day after all of this came down to give the Florida state men's basketball team the, you know, voted them the national champions or whatever, which again, it's kind of fun when they do that, but it's, I don't know that I would hang a banner for it. You know what I'm saying? I think it's funny because that's like me saying, I'm going to declare the national champion of foosball or something. I mean, it's like, it's funny to me because it's, it's not your job. So who cares what you say? You can call them whatever you want. It doesn't make them the national champions. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can all play make-believe. We can say UNO got on a hot streak and won the NCHC frozen face-off, so boom, let's raise a banner to that. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, right. the fact of the man. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess I, I, that's a bit of a purist. I w- and I would say the same thing, you know, NHL-wise. If we don't have NHL hockey... They didn't finish the season. I don't think you award a president's trophy. I don't think you can say that this team was the best in the in the NHL when there's so many variables and unknowns to it, and you certainly can't award the Stanley Cup. It's not the first time we've had to not award the Stanley Cup. Right. Uh, so, yeah, to I, me, yeah, I mean... I, I, and I agree with you on the NHL because there have been... You know, there have been, like, lockout seasons and whatnot. So I, I completely agree. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, award things just to be awarding things. Now, this also kind of veers into the idea of, of potential, you know, extended eligibility for some of these athletes, whether we're talking the spring sports like baseball and softball or whether we're talking some of the the winter sports like collegiate hockey uh, and collegiate basketball, do you think players that were seniors that, you know, either aren't going to get a chance to to finish their season or, or finish the postseason or, you know, whatever, do you think that some of those seniors should be given an extra season of eligibility? So the NCAA has already said that bas- that baseball and softball, they're they're working on it. No, they they've already announced it. Oh, did they decide to? Extend yeah. So it? they announced it. Baseball, softball, seniors get an extra year of eligibility, and baseball, softball teams don't have a cap on scholarships. Because that's the that's the piece that that throws a, a wrench into this. Is like it's one thing to say, oh, poor senior, come back, play again, right? Got it. Yeah. That's one thing. And and dealing with that. The the other part of that is is that in college hockey, unlike in other, you know, kind of unlike another um other non-collegiate sports, right? There's a cap on the number of players that you can have. There's a cap on the number of scholarships that you can have. And they didn't say anything about the cap on the number of players that you can have. I suspect that they'll have to release that cap as well because, I mean, what's the point of having, like, what do you do with the freshman coming in then? Right. right? 
And I think that's, for me, you know, as much as I, I, it pains me to say this because I feel bad for the seniors. I, I can understand the sports that, you know, really didn't even get a chance to start up kind of thing like baseball and softball. Sure. But Exactly. Now, I, I guess I would, I, I have mixed emotions about hockey and basketball because those seasons were almost done. And so you let's take UNO hockey as an example here, since it's the most relevant example to this podcast. I mean, we know that Mike Gabinet and, and his staff have some freshmen coming in this upcoming season to replace the departing seniors. And the question is, should the seniors be given another year because that could you're absolutely right on the on the potential ramifications and and there's just a lot of logistics with that i mean uno for example is limited on the number of lockers that they have um you know when you're talking about a hockey team there's not a lot of room on the bench there you know potentially there's only so many guys that you typically dress for a hockey game would those guys even get much playing time or would the the freshmen end up playing another year in juniors and would there be potential problems with that? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of stuff to, to have to figure out. I don't, I don't know. I mean, my, on the, you know, my gut is to say that the sports like hockey are, they're done and I'm sorry, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles kind of statement, you know? And, and you know you can you can start you can start talking as an organization in, in the NCAA about what can you do to you know honor the seniors who had a bit of a you know rough go of it kind of thing and missed their conference in, in the national tournaments. But I feel that it causes more problems than than it solves. Yeah, it, it, it definitely has a, it would have a ripple effect, you know, for the next like couple seasons for sure. Uh, as far as new personnel coming in, it's, it's a hard one because again, you go back to all of those North Dakota fans who would like to have seen this team, which had a lot of talent on it, get to play for a national championship. And, and part of you is like, well, it'd be great if we could bring those guys, but then you have to think about the player needs too. Are those players necessarily going to want to come back? And obviously they wouldn't have to come back. Um, but some of them are going to want to go play professional hockey. Um, you know, move on to other things. It's, it's a real hard one. And and basketball, it's the, it's the same thing too. So we don't know what they'll do as it regards winter sports. Um, and I'm kind of, I'm waiting with bated breath to see because that would create, like, like we've talked about, a lot of logistical issues for the sport that these coaches really haven't had um, to deal with. Right. So, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of with you on that. But I, I like, like you said, like so- baseball, softball, where there was a lot of season left to play. Yeah, that I think makes a little bit more sense. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard, it's hard to know what to do in these circumstances. Obviously it's not the, the fault of the players or, or anything else. They just kind of have the rug pulled out from under them. And, and, um, yeah, I guess it goes back to that point, you know, play every game like it's your last, you know, cause it very well may be your last game. So, yeah. So, so yeah. on the topic of honoring, I say seniors, but I mean, honoring the players now that the, we, we yep. assume the seniors are open, do we want to talk and, and pick a, talked about doing a player of the year and a rookie of the year, because a lot of times, okay. you know, NHL, for those that don't know, NHL has a rookie of the year trophy, and so we thought it'd be kind of nice to look at UNO and say, you know, who's our overall players of the year, but also then... Pick a rookie that really stood out to us. Exactly. I think, yeah, I think that that's a, that was, that was our idea. And I, I like that because we were originally talking about just having one player, but uh, I like the idea since we had so many rookies on this team this season, I think it's a good idea to do our player of the year and our rookie of the year. And they, it could be one in the same, Jason. I'm, I'm just, you know, I haven't told you. Right. We Very decided well this be. mere moments before the podcast. Do I need a start or do you want to pick first? 
Um, I will go ahead and pick first. So let's start uh, with your player of the year pick. I'm going to say that my player of the year, and there were a lot of there were a lot of potential candidates for player of the year, but I'm going to have to go with Kevin Conley as my player overall player of the year. I know he didn't lead the team in goals. Um, he was tied in overall points with Taylor Ward, but uh, 12 goals, 15 assists on the season. But more than that, I think his leadership, um, his tenacity, the way he played all season, um, I was really impressed with him. He is he is consistently this season, he has been one of our, and I, I, I say this season, I guess the season's over, but um, he really was. You know, I think he was the player I was most impressed with, and and um, he was a guy that you know was constantly trying to make things happen in the game. And I think his his just his awareness and his presence down low in front of the net um, was really really important to the team this season. So he would be my player of the year, his and then my his consistency yeah. I think was really what uh, was the biggest asset for you and oh you know i think yeah. a lot of the other players had great seasons but at times were non-existent and then maybe kind of fallen into the background uh but he he seemed like one of the only players that day in day out friday saturday every weekend showed up yep yeah exactly right and i think i mean he's we've under gabinet and his staff I mean, we've had a number of guys who've transferred in, and and he is really he's a great addition to get um, from uh, DU. And I, again, I was I was really impressed with him. He he came into his own in a way that I I wasn't necessarily expecting this season, um, but I really liked his play, and I'm glad we have him back for another season. Um, so yeah, my my overall player of the year was Kevin Conley. And then my rookie of the year, and this was a little tougher because there were a lot of ways that I could have gone on this. You know, do I do I go with one of the skaters? Do I, you know, do I go with a goalie? You know, a, a case could definitely be made for Isaiah Seville in that in that department. Um, we had three rookie goaltenders this season, um, so he would definitely have been a, a strong choice. But I've got to go with a player that I picked several times as my player of the weekend throughout the season, I've got to go with Joey Abate, who is one of the most entertaining players on the ice. You know, he's going to play with a lot of emotion. You know, he's going to play with a lot of heart. He might get into a scrum with, you know, the other team two, three times a game does not matter. Joey Abate has got to be the guy. Um, you know, again, it's his rookie campaign. I think he is going to develop and evolve into to just one of those forwards that we talk about. You know, ten years from now, I just he's one of those entertaining players, and and again, he might not be the flashiest player. You know, he might not have I, he might not have had the best stats this season, but he was a player that I really liked. Um, always entertaining, always a burst of energy out there on the ice, and the way he played in that final weekend series against North Dakota, in particular the Friday night game, uh, I thought was phenomenal. And, uh, you know, we had heard that he was nursing, you know, injuries, you know, ailments, other things throughout the season. So Joey Abate would be the guy that I would go with as my rookie of the year. So Conley was on my list. He was one I was... Definitely pretty high on. Uh, I probably was going to piggyback you and pick him, but I think we should, you know, draw attention to some of the others. Uh, so yeah, I wondered pick... when I picked that, I'm like, when I picked that, I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Well, and, you know, like, Conley's one, you know, for me it was Conley, Ward, and Weiss were the three that just stood out to me, I think. You know, yeah. Weiss this year really, like, his playmaking ability kind of showed a little bit more than it did last year. I agree, because and- last season, Jason, we were wondering if we were wondering if he was going to develop into the player we were hoping he could become. He was, you know, undersized. He was small. It 
you, you kind of wondered if he was going to be able to, to, to survive the wear and tear of playing an NCHC schedule each season. But I agree right. with you. This yeah, season, and on this much, team much improved. He finishes, I'll, I'll let you go. Yeah. On this team, he finishes third in points. So while he's not the goal scorer, and, and if you go just strictly by goals, you know, he's probably not going to be on the top of your list. But again, that's not his game. Like his game is the playmaker. He's there to, to really set up the guys. And when he was put into the right spots, you know, I really thought he excelled. But for me, like we talked about with Conley, consistency matters. And I think that Ward was, Ward's my pick. And, and, and that's mostly just because it seemed like we could really rely on him every weekend to find a goal here or there. Um, you can't expect to score every game. But even those games that he didn't score, he had opportunities, he had chances. And, you know, it, it sucks that he went down with the injury and his season was over before the season finished early. But uh, I, I really felt like he was a contributor constantly to this team, and, and that matters. And obviously he finished tops in points and tops in goals, but you know, that's, that's what we expect from him. And, and your pick for uh, Abate's pick as, as rookie of the year really matters because what this team really needs moving forward is a one, two punch. And I could see, you know, Ward and Abate being that one, two punch scoring wise where teams can't just key up on Ward's line and say, that's the line we have to shut down because you've got Abate in, in the background on that second line or something. So, Moving forward, I think that makes a lot of sense and it is a um, good thing for UNO if, if that can really kind of end up the way we want it. Yeah, and, I, and I, I'll and tell you, just to add on, on the Ward thing, I mean, really the last two seasons, you know, in the nine-win season and then in this season where we uh, won 14 games, he really was in both seasons the most consistent player and for a player who's so young um it's really impressive to see he's he's been he's been a very important part of this team and i honestly i can't imagine the roster without him i mean i think i think there would have been a lot more uh there would have been a lot more downs this season without him on the roster if he'd gone down earlier with an injury uh, it would have been it would have been tough on the team to play consistently week in week out. So um, yeah, he's a he's a phenomenal guy, and uh, and uh, I was you know uh, I was impressed with him out of the gate uh, his freshman season. So yeah, he's he's going to be a good one the next couple of years. So just like you, I was kind of teeter tottering on you know two players for rookie of the year. I think. You had mentioned Seville. You know, Seville's an obvious candidate for that. Mostly because of the position he plays. Lee, you know, there's there's six defensemen. There's 12 forwards or 13 forwards sometimes. Sometimes there's seven defensemen. Like, there's multiple players at those different positions that you're competing against. Whereas a goaltender, especially in our situation, we saw Seville pretty much whenever Seville was available. Yeah. I mean, the only times we didn't see him was if he was hurt or when he was over in Europe. Exactly. He was he was the go-to guy. Yep. So I, I troubled with, like, do we pick him because he's the best of the bunch and he's a goaltender and, and that, or do you, you know, you kind of look at it holistically and, and really what I kind of ended up coming down to was I was looking at a player that performed well. You know, again, consistency really matters to me. Like, I want to see always the best effort. Um, but I was also looking for, like, kind of a player that a little bit surprised me. And looking at who we've picked in the past and stuff, um, I actually, I'm going to pick Nolan Sullivan. Yep. We talked Absolutely. about him a lot as picks for our games for the weekends. Even when we, it seemed like even when we didn't pick him because someone just shone a little brighter, he was always part of the conversation. And I think he was a little bit under the radar for a lot of people coming in. You know, I think we've talked about it on the podcast before that you and I saw him play, and we both thought you know he's going to be someone special. 
but this team really struggled last year in the faceoff dots. We had a really hard time winning faceoffs, and to see him come in and take that role and be so effective uh, at winning faceoffs, I thought was just a huge thing for this team. And I don't know that he'll ever be a a top three point producer or a you know top two goal scorer or something for us, but. He's kind of always one of those guys that I think is gonna gonna be a factor in every game for the Mavs moving forward as long as he decides to stay here, hopefully for four years. Uh, absolutely, he's he's like a spark plug when you have him in the lineup, and it may not show up on the stat sheet. You may not see it when you're looking at game by game goal and assist totals, just like you said. But there's there's something about having him in the game. To me, it's it's kind of in in a way, it's kind of like a bate. You know, they're they're they played with they played with a, a, a certain amount of heart that we really hadn't seen, not just last season, but the last couple seasons. There was something about him uh, coming in the game, and like you said, he's a uh, you know both of those players. They're both kind of feisty players out there on the ice, uh, and they'll both play a real emotional game. And uh, and like you said, the the face-off statistic is one where we had struggled for a while uh and he was definitely the face-off master when uh when uh certain officials weren't uh you know giving him the boot yeah waving him off and booting him out of the circle yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> right so um yeah i think that those are those are both great picks um and I think, you know, I think we would agree that, uh, you know, a guy like Isaiah Seville had a terrific year in net, and he's only going to get better as things go along. But you and I, being who we are, we like to we like to be a little bit different in our picks. So, And I'm sure the there are going to be tweets like. and comments about why we should have picked someone else, and, you know, we welcome that. I want the interaction. I assume you do as well, but... You know, I think we all look at the game just slightly different. We all look at the team slightly different. So if you're listening to this and you have uh, someone that we missed or, or even a reason why you support our picks that we didn't talk about, I think that's a great thing to, to comment on and, and start that banter because as fans at this point in time, we have nothing else to chat about. We have literally nothing else to do right now. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, um, yeah, just a, a crazy way to end the season. I wish these guys had gotten a shot at Denver. You and I, that was the matchup that we wanted to see in the playoffs. Um, and I, I, you know, I think they might have broken through and, and finally, finally gotten a win against Denver after all these seasons. So we'll it's know. it for the season, but we did want to make sure that we that all of our listeners know that it's not the end of the season for for Mav for the puck. I have puck cast. I can't know why I'm tripping over that. Uh, I don't know why Jason cannot talk, but it is still the Mav podcast. We we did not change the name. We're gonna <laughs> <laughs> Corona Cast Nineteen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So we are not done. We have some plans uh, to talk about. It probably won't be an every week thing here now that the season's over. Uh, but we, we do want to see what happens with the, the NHL. And we did have plans to talk about uh, drafts and incoming players and some stuff over the summer. So uh, if you haven't listened to, to back episodes of the Mav Puck cast, now is a great time to kind of get caught up here before we... Uh, dump some player profile things on onto you later here this summer, and and that'll kind of take us through. And then I assume that we will be back in the fall when hockey returns because I'm optimistic that hockey returns in the fall. I'm I'm optimistic that hockey returns too. And one of the things that we are going to talk about this summer is our or spring, whenever is our all time Maverick team. And you haven't been around since the beginning like I have. So you're going to have to do a little bit of homework on that and potentially consult some people for some ideas on players to pick. But we will be doing our all-time Maverick team sometime during the spring or summer. So that, that'll that be an exciting podcast too. But uh, 
but yeah, I got to tell you, it's uh, it's it's weird circumstance, weird time. Uh, if things in our world weren't the way they were, I certainly would have driven out uh, and done a podcast with you today and uh, or tomorrow if we gone three games against Denver. Um, and it would have been a lot of fun to do that, but uh, but here we are, kind of self quarantining in our homes, and uh, and I'm glad we practiced. You know, it was it was uh, it was good for foreshadowing to practice uh, doing this by phone because we were able to try a few things out and see which method we liked the best. And um, I just uh, I just uh, you know I want to encourage our fellow fans to kind of hang in there. Um, I know it's tough right now. I know it's a big bummer because, you know, we all spend a lot of time uh, pouring over uh, all of the kind of the nitty gritty trivia of these hockey teams throughout the season. And um, it's it's just it's it's a fun pastime. It's a great distraction from life. And and I, we just we all have a great time with kind of our, our fellow fans, you know, um, enjoying that fellowship around collegiate hockey. So um, just hang in there. We'll be here. We'll be here to talk to you guys and entertain you guys and, and frustrate you guys and leave you scratching your heads. But um, but I would say be sure to follow us, uh, you know, Matt Puck on Twitter, Matt Puck on Facebook. We've got uh, both a like page and a Facebook group. And if you answer the questions on the Facebook group, Bridget will let you in. If you don't answer the questions, she's not going to let you in. And you can listen to all the back episodes of the podcast Um at mapbook.com we've got a section where you can listen in a variety of different formats and until next time hang in there america go maps go maps